The individuals featured in this video did not receive compensation, free products, or discounted products for sharing their experiences with Katsu equipment. The views and opinions expressed are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Katsu Global. The experiences shared are personal to the interviewees and your results may differ. Always use Katsu equipment as directed and under the supervision of a qualified professional. Improper use may result in injury. I went to the University of Wyoming. I was a skinny little rat. Like, uh, you'd probably say, get that kid a sandwich. I went on a, on a scholarship there. It was not an enjoyable experience. I blew my knee out uh, through bad strength and conditioning. Did you <laughs> swim all four years? Yes, I did. I did not quit. That is the one thing I will say I'm proud of. To yeah. give us an idea, so mm -hmm. what was your best time in my, your uh, best event there <laughs> as, mm -hmm. as opposed to where you are now? So I made NCAAs in my senior year. at so one, NCAA championship. Yeah, uh, okay. NCAA college one, oh, wow. NCAA the, like the elite. Yeah, of the, the elite, and it was 155.3. Okay. Um, just this last year yeah. in December, I'm 152.0. No way. Yes, I am at faster than I ever have been in my entire life in my 30s. 155 to what? Now, the, mm -hmm. what he means is one minute 55 seconds, <laughs> yes. one minute 52 seconds, which in three seconds we know in swimming, mm -hmm. three seconds is a long, long way. It is. It's like it's like a second is like a mile in a yeah. swimmer's mind. <laughs> I mean, obviously the rules have changed, but my my physique. I'm a late bloomer. I've been late to the party uh, when it comes to athletic performance. I did not get faster in my 20s because one, I didn't have Katsu, and then the other thing, I didn't have the support system or resources. I'm still limited on resources, but I'm very, very creative and more mature now. I've been able to extend and fi keep finding a way to get faster, and it makes it and it makes it harder to leave the sport because it's like, you know, I, I'm just curious. I want to, I want to know more. I want to yeah. see where, how far I can take this. Well, what's interesting is so I'm, I'm looking mm -hmm. at your arms as a mm -hmm. katsu person. Yeah. And I go, this is like perfect. It's like you're literally doing some forearm and bicep curls, but you're not. Yeah. And it's as I continue to keep reading the articles or continue to collaborate with people in the katsu global world, I find more and more benefits, if not new things of like, hey, you know, there's more to this. And because I train with these in the water, not these yeah, ones. Yeah, I use yeah. aqua bands in the water. Yeah. I had a power tower of like 100 pounds of water and like katsu and a weighted vest. And I was just like, just going at it. And, it, and I had to do like four, maybe 825s on two minutes or so like that. And I was probably pushing my body to the extreme, but I just, it's, it's not, yeah, the physical benefits are great, but I'm trying to do those things for my mentality, yes. thinking when my brain says, this is really hard, this is as far as I can go. No. Yes. And I think uh, Chris Morgan coined it as <laughs> race pain. Yes. So what you're experiencing, what he's doing is he's doing breaststroke, trying to lift this hundred pound amount of water up this sort of ladder. Mm -hmm. I, looking at it, it looks painful, but that little bit is allowing your mind to understand that pain is what? Temporary. <laughs> and on the other side of pain is the very thing that we want to achieve. Being a division one athlete was not difficult, at least now in my 35 year old self. Trying to tell my 22 year old self or 21 year old self, no, I, I don't think my younger self would want to hear that. When you're doing your training with the katsu, mm -hmm. and I know how it feels, it's like, ah, I can't get there. But once mm -hmm. you get that feeling, once you've internalized that, that, ah, I can deal with this pain. How does that help you in a race? It makes it that much less painful because the pain threshold has been raised. Right. And when I go to a race, like say this morning, I was only going like 85, 85, 80, 90% effort. And I was on like a two second glide on every stroke, which is, that's a drill that you do in practice, but that's how efficient and how, how in tune I am with my stroke and my pain yeah. threshold. I know where my personal limits are. Tomorrow, can you take me through your race day and how you incorporate katsu? When I get up in the morning, I kind of, again, do breathing exercises um, and I just kind of get myself centered. And then um, I drink like 60 ounces of water. I do the arms and then I, you know, get breakfast and I uh, drive over the pool and I'm doing, I'm not getting in general warm up. I don't want to swim any more than I have to. <laughs> Which <laughs> I, is highly unusual. Yeah, they're, I mean, you go to these meets and you've yeah. seen them, Steve. Like they're swimming twice. They're doing the general warm up at 7 a.m., which I want to sleep in. I'm rolling in around maybe around 9 o'clock and, and the meet's starting. So I'm already doing this yeah. and then I do like some dry land uh, exercises or some dynamic stretching and kind of yoga poses and try to really find a way to lengthen 
the, the, the muscles out and get them loose and stay warm. You want to be warm, but you don't want to be sweating, right. sweating your electrolytes out. Get so in. you haven't gotten in the water yet. No, I haven't gotten in the water yet. And this is like, this is like when everyone's starting to race and I haven't even hit my, I haven't even done my general warm up yet. And I only swam once. I only swim once before my race. How many minutes do you think um, you do? I like no more than 30, 30 minutes. I mean, really? Probably 15, 30 minutes. I mean, the more you swim, we're not here to train. We're here right. to race. Most of the events we're talking about now, it's they're controlled sprints or sprints now. I mean, Katie Ledecky's proven right. that, yeah. and Caleb Dressel and all those all those uh, big wigs. Yeah. They've, they've shown yeah. that it's not just all distance swimming. So you're, you're about a, just a shade mm -hmm. over two minutes of intense when you're doing your tuna breast. Yeah. But you've literally prepared your body from the time you've woken up. Yes, I'm preparing my body. I'm getting geared up. I'm checking, you know, like, you know when you like check a car, like right, right. the oil, oh, you ch change your oil, get your brakes done. It, it's the same thing with the body. Yeah. Like you, it's you, you are the Porsche. Yeah. Um, and you have to take care of your body. You only get one and you have to really be in tune with it. And now you, they're calling your heat up to the mm -hmm. starting blocks. Mm -hmm. When do you take these off? I take them off uh, at the last moment as possible. It just depends how I feel. Like, do I want to do legs or arms? Like, I was doing legs more this morning because the 200 is more more crazy leg dominant. The 150 would be more like upper body dominant. So I try to keep them on as long as possible because then when I take them off, I get this like endorphin, this rush of like cooling sensation. Yeah. I feel like, ooh, it feels good. A lot of our track, Olympic track athletes say they feel lighter. Mm -hmm. what, what do you feel? What's that sensation? When you're in the water, you have to hold your breath sometimes. I don't feel as out of air because the air that I'm breathing in the race, I'm not going to really benefit from the nutritional value of that breath of oxygen till probably five minutes, maybe later or something like yeah. that. So the breaths I'm taking during the 200, it, no. I mean, what you're doing leading up to that is what counts. So doing all the breathing exercise, doing all the katsu. Because I remember doing the FINA World Cup Series in Indianapolis, and I've never really done short course meters. And I was doing the 200, and I made top eight every time. I got third, which was really? crazy. I got third in a 200 meter breaststroke, 205, and I was like, what? And and I, I was racing Reese Whitley and Nick Fink. Nick Fink was way on the other side. He snuck in there. He, Reese Whitley, he's a big yeah, dude. If you ever watched the race, I had the katsu on and I took it off. And, and I felt this like, you know, I don't feel like I'm out of breath. I could have kept going. No way. I had this like over oxygenated in my blood. Yeah. Like it wasn't, it was very like pool. I didn't feel like I was out of breath or like dying of exhaustion. I could have pushed myself harder. So I found a new threshold. It's like, yeah. okay. It's like, you don't be afraid of pushing those boundaries. That's an internal dialogue that we all have. Without Katsu, I think it would be even more difficult. I think this would be an interesting experiment to try, Steve, where you would have somebody as dedicated as I am that has Katsu, and then have someone who's like the same age, if not somebody the same caliber, not use Katsu, or, or I don't care. I mean, I don't have to use Katsu for five years, but I, I swear I can't let go of these. Without Katsu, you probably wouldn't be able to keep your performance level at its optimal, if not keep improving, and if you didn't have it, you probably would be, if not making smaller strides, but you'd be pretty stagnant. Because when we're young, we have a lot of natural pliability, lots of endorphins, lots of um, hormones, like, because we're growing, we're young. But when we stop, we sort of stop growing around age 25 and the testosterone starts to then yeah. kind of whittle down over yeah. the years go by. And this is where people sort of give up. Mentally, like most young swimmers, when something that used to serve them doesn't serve them well anymore, they can't let it go. Because they're like, well, it's not working anymore. It's like, well, you're dealing with a different body. Yes. And the hormones, the chemical, the biochemistry is different. And you have to be willing to be open to change and to excel yourself in a manner that will help you grow uh, this stuff like yes. this. Physically, now I am more in shape than I was when I was in my 20s and teens. Yeah. I'm no joke. And then you start to wonder, how far can I take this? Katsu equipment is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. The statements made in this video have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Please consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new exercise or therapy program. This video is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical or professional advice. Katsu Global assumes no liability for any actions taken based on the information provided.